spirituality. Good morning, everyone. My name is Leslie, and my topic is on the development of spirituality. First of all, I'd like to know your personal input on what is spirituality. For instance, for me, since we use the term spirituality a lot in my religion, I associate it automatically with religion. But then as I found more, it's actually just not about religion. So what do you guys, what's your input on spirituality? What do you guys associate the word with? Finding Free oneself. Spirit. Hmm? Free spirit. Free spirit. Oh, Finding oneself. Some people told me ghost. 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 But it's actually more than that. The term spirituality, as defined by Google, is the ability to experience and integrate meaning and purpose in one's life. So we find meaning in life through the use and connection with others, art, literature. So it's just not religion. It's like a connection with others, something greater than ourselves, the environment, and that. And as we can see in the pictures, many of the images, we can either go to religion or we can either adopt our own personal system, as I will show you later. Many scholars say that this term is ambiguous because you can't really define an exact definition of spirituality. It's like religion. You can't really define the term religion because if you try to create your own definition, it's going to be based upon your perception of religion, of your religion, not what others think. Not all religions are the same. And so you can try to find meaning in your life through your own system or a different system. So you don't have to go through the original orthodox traditions. You can go through your own personal system. So as a universal human experience, it like touches us all and it makes us feel connected to things greater than ourselves. And it could come in the form of a spiritual religious experience or another belief system, as I've said earlier. It can be sacred, trans sacred or transcendental, or it can like originate from the simplest of things. The term spirituality has the word spirit, so it has to do with your spirit on your own. So that means the spirit, since it's your own, you, you shouldn't allow others to like tell you what to believe in. And like why it matters, for instance, since I originally thought that the term spirituality refers to religion, I assume that many people, like for instance, are you guys, like raise your hand if you're in a religion, but because of your parents, not because you actually yeah, so many of us, we have a religion because of our parents. It's not that we actually, oh, well, I'm not sure, but most of us probably don't want to be within our religion. We want to adopt our own beliefs. So that's why it matters. So I want to like encourage you to go seek out and discover your own spirituality. As we will see, you don't need to be religious to be spiritual. You can adopt your own spirituality in your own way. And throughout time, we have seen that many people are able to influence us. For instance, our friends and family, they're able to influence us. Right now, since we're younger and we're underaged, we have our parents to influence us because they tell us what to believe in since little, and so we grow up with that perspective. But there comes a time when you're going to develop different beliefs. And also, the society, because when society says something and everybody, the majority of the country is like, yes, and like, some other people want to go against it, it's unaccepted and rejected. So that's when many people are degraded down. So the majority, the society, that affects the way what we believe in, in the end. Also our health. For instance, when we're sick, or like in the hospital, I don't know if any of you have been in the hospital, but like if you're in the hospital, you would want to pray, right? Because you'd want to find that spiritual or that prayer, that comfort that comes with having a connection with God. And of course, the church also has a connection, as we've seen through time, that the church has big influence in politics, and politics dominates our country. So there's actually a, a division between spirituality and religion, as shown in this graph. For instance, religion is asked, like, what practices should I follow? Like, what's right and what's wrong? What's true and what's false? But it's already established. It's already there. Or as opposed to spirituality, it's like, where do I find meaning? How do I find connection? What should I live by? It's like you find your own definition, your own purpose in life, your own significance. But in the end, both areas, be it your own or established, they offer belief, comfort, reflection, and they offer you a connection with yourself, with others, and many people. 
that's why you can go both ways. And in the end, there's two paths, right? You can go the traditional orthodox way, which is by religion and established ways, or you can go and create your own personal belief system. So here we have images of relig different religious sy symbols. There's many religions, and each one follows their own religion. And it's been here for centuries. It's a way of life, and it's a pretty predominant way of life. It's Religion is a huge smear of one's life that anyone can see it. It's everywhere that we can see it. Yeah, and even though there's like a great vi variety, yeah, there's a great vi variety, um, there's always little aspects of our religion that make it stand out, that makes a people choose a certain religion over another. And some, like for me, I have lots of religious beliefs that I follow and that I cherish and that I like. And we've seen the religious, for instance, in the Tenth of Moses, they had the Ten Commandments, and that's their established religion because it came from God. Whereas further past, one time started to evolve, we can see people's minds become open-minded. And so many people have started to adopt new things. Our sense of spiritual connection can come in the form of nature. Because when we think of nature, we start to reflect and ponder and feel this sort of communication with nature and there with others. And during the Romantic era, these the Romantics were in all over the country, like literally they were all over the place. They experienced a sense of revolution within themselves because they were tired of the classism era. And the classism era was from ancient Greece, Greek, ancient Greece and Romans, where they established fixed principles and sets of beliefs because they were associated with the principles of nobility and hierarchy. And so the Romantics were just tired of it. So they just decided to go out and find their own spirituality. They were they didn't want to be subjected to what the classism era and all the um, the great kings and queens had to offer. So they went out and they found their own connection through nature, through God, in their own personal way. They still were connected to God, but just in their own personal way. They didn't want to be empty human shells that just followed what religion had to say. They created their own meaning of through li of life through what they had to offer. Like they wanted to create their own sense of meaning. They didn't want to follow what others had to say. They had connection with others and. As this image shows, this is also is a little image of Lego image of Solomon, King Solomon and seven hundred wives. And the time of in the Bible it doesn't say that it's not really mentioning that how many wives you can have, but it can be inferred from like the beginning that men should only have like one wife. But here Solomon has like King Solomon has like seven hundred wives. And that's his form of spirituality. He wants to find that connection, that emotional and physical satisfaction with more than one person. And that's his formal way of adopting it. Also, in ways that we didn't know we can find our own spirituality, for instance, revolutions. Um, the French, Americans, any kind of revolution, there's a form of spirituality. During the French Revolution, they adopted the slogan called liberty, equality, fraternity, or death. The term liberty is, they weren't exactly the same from what, but they wanted liberty. It could be inferred that this liberty could be psychological, emotional, physical. And an example of this was when they stormed the Bastille. The Bastille was um, a symbol for the king's power. And so the fact that they destroyed it physically, and, yeah, literally and symb symbolically, it represented how they were just separating from the church and the kings and the queens. Their own liberation was found through there. And equality, they, it showed fraternity and equality could be shown with the women the march of the women on Versailles when they were marching together to demand food, that's fraternity and equality because they were marching together. They were finding their spiritual connection together as a group instead of individual. And many of these ideas might have been gathered from the Enlightenment because the Enlightenment, like the philosophers Voltaire and John Locke, Locke would establish that people have inalienable rights, natural rights that people should have such as life, liberty, and property. And they adopted the term liberty because they deserved, or they thought they deserved that. And the Declaration of Independence, 
that's their form of separation. They didn't want to be any more tied down to what religion had to say. And the atheism, this is an atheism symbol. And atheism, although it's totally separate from religion, it's actually quite the opposite. It's still, religion and atheism have like an inextricable relationship because one can't live without the other. Atheism is a reaction from religion because when people have, when suffer from tragedies, they adopt atheism because they feel they don't have, they feel the absence of a powerful being who will protect them. And so, atheism is their form of spirituality, their form of connection with greater things. They don't necessarily have to believe in religion, they just believe in other things. And so, in the end, you can be spiritual. You just don't have to be religious. You can be spiritual. And, I mean, you can say your religion. I mean, I'm not telling you not to like, go out and find your own. But if you like your religion, such as I, you can um, just don't have anyone force you into believing a certain thing. If it doesn't fit with you, you have to do something about it because you can't just be forced. Because if you're forced, you're obviously going to do things you don't want to by force and you're not going to like it. Religion is the belief in someone else's experience. The beliefs are there. All you do is just have to follow them. You're going to be like human shells or visions of no future. Whereas spirituality is having your own experience, discovering yourself, discovering the world, and discovering. My mentor said, when I asked him because he's a Quaker, and I asked him like what it was, he told me that when he discovered what he learned, um, he discovered that his religion wasn't what it used to be. As in, um, the Quakers, they have totally went away from their old beliefs. So he went and rediscovered his own Quakerism. And so what he told me was, don't take anything on faith. Learn for yourself. If you have questions about anything, then read. Look for yourself. If you feel that some belief doesn't connect with you, you go out there and find it yourself. You don't just follow it, because in the end, And it shouldn't be practiced because someone else tells you to. It has to come from you, because in the end, whatever you choose benefits you, and it affects you, not other people. It should come from your own decisions, your own commitments to what you want to do. So go out there and find your own spirituality. Don't tell someone to tell you. Done.